you cannot separate Harry Potter as a character from J.K. Mm. Rowling, the author. Mm-hmm. And you cannot separate J.K. Rowling from Harry Potter. They are one. They are mm-hmm. the same consciousness, energy, creative, whatever you want to call it. And my seeing is that it's the same thing with us. We are characters in amazing stories. And you cannot separate us from the creators, just as you cannot separate us from an author from a character like I just explained. So we are simultaneously who we really are, is the creator expressing itself through an individual wow. character in a story. But when we think of, you know, who we are on a day-to-day basis, you're Ben, I'm Robert, you know, the bodies that we have, the houses we live in, all of that, we're the character in the story. We are not the creator in that way. Although, if you speak truthfully with a capital T, you can't separate us from the Creator. To me, this is what's really meant by oneness in spiritual circles, not that we're all individuals who are connected, but that we all really are the author, the writer, the Creator, whatever word you want to use. So I and the Father are one means that the the, the characters are the same as the author, are one with the author. Yeah, and this is not some airy-fairy spiritual thing. I mean, everybody can really take a look at this if they read fiction, and they can say, yeah, I get that, I've experienced it. The character does appear to be an individual and real and make decisions, but a character can't think anything, feel anything, do anything, say anything, unless the author wrote it first. And it's the same thing with us, except going back to your original question, the holographic metaphor is how our reality is created instead of just words on paper. But... It's a similar kind of a thing. Okay, now I want to get to that in a second because I think that's really important. But when you talk about how we're the, we're the characters and that there's an author who's writing the story, that kind of implies that we don't have any control over our world. Is that what you mean to say? That's what I have been shown and experienced to be true. And it's something that many people don't like to hear. It's something that many people resist aggressively. To me, if you really look at what happens in your life day to day, down to a very small, a very fine degree, even down to thoughts and feelings and decisions and everything else, that's what you see the truth to be. And I'm all about, as you know from the Ultimate Key to Happiness book, I'm all about what you actually experience, what you can actually see, versus, you know, theories and Mm. theoreticals and philosophies and stuff like that there's all kinds of philosophies arguing we have free will and we don't and but to me if you really look at what's going on and you look at it with brutal honesty and objectivity that's what you see the ironic thing is most people think oh my god if that was true that's a really horrible bad thing to me the reality is it couldn't be more opposite to that it makes everything in life so much more delicious and easy Mm. and less stressful just to use those labels versus something precious being taken away or lost. But that's a really long conversation for another day. What's the truth of that? But that's what I've been shown on my journey into truth with a capital T. So then does that leave us with just sitting back and enjoying whatever shows up, kind of like you watch a movie, or does that leave us with with trying to to co-create even though we know that there is ultimately a creator? Where does that leave us? Well, see, here's where it gets interesting, and it's very it's fascinating to me. In the early stages of this, it can be perceived as confusing. If you go into a Barnes & Noble or any large bookstore, or you were to go into, it's hard these days, you know, because Blockbuster went out of business and a lot of other video stores, but if you went to a place that had a whole bunch of uh, DVDs available for rental, you would see that there are stories of people who are on spiritual paths and they manifest things and they have intuition and they have magical powers and and you see, you know, things like superheroes that can fly and other kinds. There's, there's all kinds of stories that are available where characters appear to do all kinds of things. And so, uh, to me, ultimately, this entire human experience is about who we really are, which my current label is true creative essence. I've gone through different labels, consciousness and expanded self and different things. My current label, for reasons that we're talking about here, is true creative essence for who we really are and who the creator is. Um, is all about experiencing every possible what would happen if scenario that's possible within this human experience. It wants to play and explore and express itself creatively every possible way that it can. 
So there will be some characters who, yes, will try to change their reality and will try to use techniques and will try to manifest, and they may succeed, they may not. They may succeed sometimes and not others, and that's what's being explored. What I've discovered in the path that I've been on is that there is a very different way to have this human experience. There is a very different way to experience your life on a daily basis, and that very different way is very similar to how you experience a work of fiction as the reader, that you can very much be experiencing everything that happens in your life, no matter what, with a similar kind of a relationship mm -hmm. that you would as the reader of a really great story. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, so we're kind of. You use the metaphor of a movie a lot in uh, in the busting loose in the busting loose books. Um, so it's kind of like we're watching a movie. Would you say? Uh, I like the term total immersion. A movie. I like how you use that total immersion movie. Is that kind of what you're talking about? We're in an immersive experience, an immersive movie experience. Yeah. I'm very. The way I'm built as a person, I like to be very precise, and I like to be very clear, and I like to be as accurate as possible. If I were to choose a metaphor to explain what I just said, to me, reading a novel is a more accurate and powerful metaphor for what really happens versus a movie, because with a movie, you're spoon-fed everything. Mm. With a novel, you read words on a page, and a whole world gets manufactured in your imagination. Mm. It gets created out of nothing, and it appears very real, and it's a different kind of an experience. And to me, what happens there is more accurate as a metaphor, but either way is fine. Is it more um, a Total is immersion it movie experience is, 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 is you know as accurate, but if you compare what happens reading a really awesome story versus watching a really great movie, it's a different experience. Right. Reading is more participatory, it seems like. Is that correct? Yeah. And it's really like your imagination is manufacturing the entire story and then mm -hmm. immersing you in it. Mm -hmm. And there's a magic that happens with that that doesn't happen in a movie where it's all given to you. So say you but have... That's, that's really, you know, that's a little bit of nitpicking. And it, okay. But I just wanted to make the, uh, the point. So, so you wake up in the morning. We wake up in the morning and we do our day. Our day begins. Are you saying that if we experience our the first thing that, that we see and our our loved ones and whatever experiences we have in the morning, if we if we participate in it the same way that a reader participates in the reading experience, that we can have a, a different life experience from that? Yeah, but it's not something you can choose. It's mm. not something you can technique your way into, but it's mm. something that can awaken in your life. That's awesome. Hang tight, Robert. We've got to take a break. We're talking to Robert Scheinfeld, author of The Ultimate Key to Happiness and the Busting Loose series of books. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Did you know that organic sulfur can cleanse and defend your body against the poisons we're exposed to each day? Organic sulfur crystals from sulfurdefense.com help by forcing oxygen and nutrition into your cells while eliminating heavy metals, contaminants, and damaging radiation. Defend yourself and family from toxic assault with one of the most critical and essential minerals available today. Order online at sulfurdefense.com. That's sulfurdefense.com. Or call 800-593-6273. I'm David Cordani, President and CEO of Cigna. We're proud to support the March of Dimes by walking in the March for Babies. It feels great to know that the money we raise funds life-saving research and programs that improve the health of babies. With your help, we can make this year better than ever. Join Cigna and our coworkers across the country in March for Babies to help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthier babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org and march to help our babies. Thank you. We live in a complicated society. Stressful issues are always popping up. Have you ever been treated unfairly by someone? Have you ever been overcharged for a repair? Have you ever signed a contract or a document? Worried about identity theft? How many times have you been in those unique situations where you just wanted to call an attorney to find out if you're right or wrong or what your legal rights are? But every time you think about calling an attorney, what do you think about first? That's right. Who do you call and how much will it cost? Our friends at Legal Shield have found a solution. 
With a nationwide network of 6,900 attorneys who average over 19 years of experience, Legal Shields law firms take over 40,000 calls per week helping their members. For less than $20 per month, you can have access to Legal Shield on everything from the trivial to the traumatic. Let Legal Shield stand up for your rights at lsprotection.com. That's lsprotection.com. Or call 855-340-SAVE. 855-340-7283. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Take delivery in spring. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. It's time for a home security quiz. What effective home security device is smaller than a coffee cup, fakes out burglars into thinking someone is home at your house while you're away, plugs into any wall outlet, is recommended by many police departments, and sells for less than $30? Yes, it's fake TV. This year, about one in every 50 U.S. homes will have a break-in, with burglars usually picking the easy target, a dark house that looks like no one is home. Fake TV is a small electronic security device that makes it look like someone is home watching TV by simulating the light from a real TV. Fake TV could be the difference between coming home to a secure house or one that's been ransacked. To get your fake TV for only $29.95 with free shipping, go to faketv.com or call 1-877-5-FAKE-TV. That's 877-532-5388 or go to faketv.com. Fake TV, the burglar deterrent. Great news, pure water lovers. BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com has a special discount offer for all GCN listeners. You can't do better than a Big Berkey for economy. For only 1.7 cents a gallon, a single set of filters can last for 5 to 10 years. There's none better than a Big Berkey for emergency preparedness as a backup water source. And you just can't beat a Big Berkey to remove dangerous chlorine, all types of fluoride, pathogenic bacteria, cysts, parasites, and unhealthy viruses products from municipal water. Berkey water filter systems are even powerful enough to purify stagnant pond water. For the gold standard in water filters, get a Big Berkey at BigBerkeyWaterFilters.com. And all GCN listeners get 5% off all ceramic filter systems. For details, call 1-877-99-BERKEY. That's 877-99-BERKEY. Big Berkey water filters for the love of clean water. A little right, a little left, but always independent-minded. The Genesis Communications Network, GCN. And we're back on the bright side. Thanks for being here. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about connective tissue, the connective tissue matrix, the intelligence behind the computerized mass of meat that is the connective tissue muscle tissue matrix and how it relates to degenerative disease. Today we're talking to Robert Scheinfeld, author of the Busting Loose series of books, Busting Loose from the Money Game, Busting Loose from the Business Game, and then uh, his most recent book, The Ultimate Key to Happiness. Real, real easy to read and very powerful, very elegant book. Uh, Robert, I wonder if you tell us a little bit about emotion. It seems to be a big topic in your work, and you have an entire, well, pretty much the entire book, The Ultimate Key to Happiness, is dedicated to understanding that aspect of the human experience. What exactly is emotion in your model? Well, the interesting thing, and again, going back to what I said before, I, this book and my current work that I share is all about observing what actually goes on in your in your own personal experience and seeing what's there. It's not a theory. It's not a philosophy. It's something that you can actually experience. Most of my life, I was a very unhappy camper <laughs> and wanted to be happy. And after applying what it is that I shared in the Busting Loose books for six and a half, seven years, 
a bunch of stuff began to change for me. And all of a sudden, I found myself taking a look at what is it that's going on inside of me that I'm calling an emotion? What is really happening there? And since it feels so bad so much of the time, what's really going on there? And how can I really make a change so that I can start feeling good instead of feeling bad most of the time? So I started observing what was really going on. And because of applying the teachings and the tools that I shared in the other books you've mentioned, 